Hallelujah. Hey, I just had felt when I was uh, planning the uh, conference too, and one of, the, one of the things that's been going on in our city is, um, as uh, pastors and leaders have been meeting in the city, and one of the things that's actually been happening in the city is um, um, just a very, very strong awareness of God bringing people from the nations to our nation. And uh, it was interesting because Anne really touched on this in her session the other day, and you don't actually have to go overseas anymore to be involved in missions, and missions has actually come um, into the nation of New Zealand. And um, we've, we've had the privilege of um, just beginning to build fresh relationship with uh, people that God has sent into our nation, and uh, wonderful people with a great spirit. And the thing that's really been standing out to me is um, um, the ministries from different nations, they bring a different anointing and a different revelation of God and a different spirit. The one thing that I've noticed um, uh, with all of them is a, a strong uh, revelation of the kingdom of God, a passionate love for the Holy Spirit, and, and a real gift of evangelism, a real heart for souls in the nation. And a couple of times when we've met in the city here as pastors, and we have a bit of fellowship and a bit to eat, but when we come in and spend a time in prayer, it's just like the heavens begin to open. And um, uh, the first, one of the first experiences I had was with a Korean pastor in town, John O., and um, I think he might even be here uh, tomorrow or Saturday. I know that he's actually committed to some things and um, really think it was interesting because he came in and we're sitting in the uh, cafe there the first time we'd actually got together to have a cup of coffee. And I just said to him, has anybody ever welcomed you to the city? He'd been in the city for about 12 years or more. And he said, no. And I said, what about the ministry? He said, no. And I discovered, um, I discovered, and it's not just... John, but I've discovered with other ministry that God has sent to our nation to help harvest our nation to be a blessing of us have not actually been received by the spiritual leadership of the nation and not been recognized and then re released. And uh, we had a bit of an encounter. John and I were out there just having a cup of coffee. And I said, you know, I asked him, I said, have you been welcome? He said, no. I said, well, I just want, to want you to know right now you're welcome we want you here. We believe God has sent you. You have a message and a ministry that's important for us in this nation. And, you know, and really think. And then the Holy Ghost, there was people around that's a, you know, that cafe is just open to the public. And next minute, we're just sitting there weeping and weeping and weeping. And just the power of the Holy Spirit came on us. And so um, uh, we've got, a, we've got um, our brother TK. He comes all the way from Zimbabwe. And I asked if he would come and share a testimony with us. And then uh, we're going to have uh, Walter and Barb who are up all the way. They've come all the way. Come on up, uh, TK. God bless you, my brother. It's so good to have you. Mighty man of God right here. And, uh, yeah. You go for it, bro. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, it is wonderful to be here. And I'm so grateful to God. Uh, firstly, I want to say to Nancy and Mary, thank you very much for uh, allowing the Lord to use you uh, in what is happening in the city. Uh, I have enjoyed um, and cherished the time that we have had with the other ministers of the gospel, uh, just meeting together and praying together and, and talking about what the Lord is doing. And I'm, I'm grateful that uh, you, uh, the Lord has used you to lead that charge. Um, what I want us to know, um, I, am, uh, I might be visiting this country, but I'm not a visitor in the kingdom of God. Um, <laughs> I just thought I would let that out. Um, um, the, the thing that um, uh, I, I might say in giving out a little testimony is uh, for you to know that um, I've been serving the Lord in a church called Forward in Faith Ministries. Um, the founder of that church is a hundred years old to now, uh, this May, and he is still preaching the gospel. He has been preaching for 75 years now, non-stop, uh, moving from nation to nation and the Lord using him. Um, I have been preaching 
for a little over uh, 36 years now, 37 years. Uh, and, and I want to thank God that uh, God found me and uh, brought me into his house to be of service. Uh, when I came to New Zealand, it was early 2001. Uh, I had already been ministering already, and I was, uh, I was uh, sent over to Auckland, where we started ministering in Auckland. That's when uh, we were the ones uh, that brought in, uh, that started preaching uh, on behalf of Forward in Faith uh, in Auckland. And then I've been to several other countries after that. But what I want us to know is that the, what the Lord has been doing here this weekend has been awesome. And what the Lord has been doing here, it is, that's the way we have to go. And you, some of us, you agree with me that um, the things that the Lord has been doing, it's purely been the Lord. Um, and and you, you would have an expectation when you come, but when you see it, uh, it exceeds your expectations. So I want to thank God for what is happening here. Um, and I want to say to the people of God, let's keep on pushing. I know, I know there is a tendency of wanting to focus on what the world is doing. One thing that Dr. Guti said to one pastor, he's, the pastor phoned him and he was complaining to say, the devil is wrecking havoc here. And Dr. Goody said over the phone, he said, let the devil wreak havoc, but you do your work. What that means is we can spend time mourning and crying about what the devil is doing, but we can spend better time preparing the army of the Lord to face the church. Because, because my Bible says when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. Our God is able. It doesn't matter how the devil comes. He can come walking with his hands. He can come with horns and ears so big. But our God is able to raise a standard. And I want you to know this. Uh, uh, when God's anointing is upon you, he will open avenues. Last night, just last night, I was praying with a family. You know, sometimes when the anointing of God is on you, he will open our, our doors for you. You don't have to break in. You don't have to force your way in. The Lord himself will open. Uh, he's, he, isn't it funny? God creates the assignment. He fulfills the assignment. He only needs you to be a vessel that is available. The Bible says, and, 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 and this is my testimony, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, the spirit of the Lord, the, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he led me to a valley that was full of dry bones. And the Bible says, the Lord said, prophesy on these bones. And the Bible says Ezekiel prophesied on the bones and, and the bones began to come together, bone upon bone. They all, the Bible says there was a noise in the valley as the bones began to come together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There can be a noise in Christ church. Oh. <laughs> we are not... I, I, I know Wes was saying here, there are people who are waiting to be offended. You say one thing, they are offended. They, they, are, they are on the internet looking for offenses. That's the world we are living in. Let's not worry about the world. Let's worry about the army of the Lord. Because God is preparing an army. The Bible says the bones began to come together. And when they came together, the Bible says the flesh came on those bones. The veins came on those bones. The muscles came on those bones. And the Bible says, but there was no life. And God said to Ezekiel, prophesy and call on the wind from every direction that it may come. And the Bible says, when the winds came, oh, the, the, those bodies... Those, 
<laughs> I love God. I love God, man. The, the, those bones became alive. And the Bible says, it was a great army. It was a great army. Now, you saw the ladies coming up here saying they've heard the voice of the Lord and they were laid hands on. What God is doing, he's preparing an army in Christ church. We are going to take Christ church like a storm. The devil won't know what hit him. <laughs> you see, you, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this and, and I'll sit down. The, 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 <laughs> The, the, the kingdom of God is not something over there. The kingdom of God is a place. And when you are in that place, you move with the place. Mm. When you are in a house where... Uh, listen, listen. The kingdom of God is a place. It's not something over there. You don't have to wish God can move in your life. Just get in the kingdom. Can you imagine Prince Charles wishing he could be a prince? But <laughs> that's why the Bible says, my people perish. Not because of demons, not because of Satan, but because of lack, because of ignorance, lack of knowledge. We, as long as we understand and God builds us up together like this, God is setting us up for a great harvest. And what is happening here, every one of the speakers coming up, I... I I've been attending and, and I, I can see God working through them. And if you don't miss this time, just what is needed for you is for you to say, I am here, Lord. Use me too. I want to be part of this. One man was told, God is going to bring food tomorrow. You will see it, but you will not eat it. I want to see it, and I want to eat it too. God bless you. Over to you, Mary. Amen. Amen. Thank you, TK. And uh, hey, we need to hear your voice. Yeah, God, God has sent you uh, to New Zealand, not just to find Zimbabweans but he sent you here for us as well, for our nation as well. And uh, God bless you and your family and your ministry. And thank you. Thank you, brother. We, we love and appreciate you very much. Thank you. Hey, I, I'm going to introduce a couple that are a part of um, our Movement Celebration Centre and uh, Walter and Barb, and they've travelled a long way, all the way from San Francisco to be over with us. And these guys are incredibly faithful and um, I won't tell all of their journey, but they in the, the church that they pastor in, um, in San Francisco, it's been through an incredibly difficult journey over about the last 10 years. And um, it, God really needed some people that were special that could stand in the midst of the storm, that could fight the battles and stand their ground and claim the victory that God has. And he chose uh, Walter and Barb to do that. They're a great couple. We love them very much. And I asked them to come and share a bit of a testimony. Who knows? So come up, guys, and, uh, and share with us. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Murray. Yeah, I'll just share br briefly, then my husband will come up and share some more. Murray, I want to thank you and Nancy so very, very much. We're super grateful for you. My husband and I are grateful for you. The church is grateful for you. So thankful for you and that Celebration family. Jonathan, Natasha, thank you so much. You've been such a huge help and your covering. is just, it's just a Celebration family. You have no idea what you have done as, as a kingdom and the family, what you have done for us personally as individuals and for the work that God is doing in San Francisco. There, there is a, um, a divine supernatural thing that's happening. I, I've been with that church for 37 years, believe it or not. I've been there. 
I first came there and I got saved and uh, moved to San Francisco, California. And I remember the first time I went there, didn't know anybody, didn't know anybody in San Francisco. And I said, God, I'll stay here and I'll serve you here till you tell me to leave. And that was 37 years ago. And I've been working in the office and a youth pastor and the media guy and the janitor and the pastor and all of the above. And I still do all these things. But um, these last several years have been real intense. And, and I'm just so grateful for the Celebration family, what you've helped us through. And, and before I forget, I also want to bring a shout out from Wayne. Is from our, he's our contractor, Celebration contractor up at Oregon Coast Love. And um, Wayne sends his love to Murray, Nancy, Jonathan, everybody, Brett, Tanya, the whole family. Uh, and he sewed into our life to help us to be here. He was not able to be here today, but uh, a lot of things have happened. Um, we were a denominational church. We disaffiliated uh, five years ago, and that was a real battle with that. And, um, and uh, Murray brought the team of contractors over, and we, in one week, in 2017, we changed the interior of that auditorium. Now, the building used to be an old supermarket. So uh, in San Francisco, it's rare to have a piece of property like that. It was a supermarket and we have a parking lot, and the inside of the building has very religious looking. We had the pews and the pink stained glass windows and all that thing, but then within one week's time, uh, we brought all the contractors over here. Corey, you're over there. Uh, Jordan, you're over there, and it was great and fantastic, and uh, Wayne led the contracting, and we lowered the platform, and it was just a phenomenal change, and then in 2018, we did the exterior, the painting. Monty and I were on the lift, and we did all the painting, and, and uh, 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 Corey and Renee and all the kids and, and Kelly and Melly and all the kids, you were out there painting the walls in our parking lot. They were there on holiday, but you helped us and they were out there and you were just painting. Murray and Nance were out there painting and, and it was just a fantastic time. So we're super grateful for you. So you've invested in us uh, in a physical way, but also spiritual way. It's been um, fantastic. And, and in 2019, we lost our worship team. And one thing I appreciate, uh, Mary, what you are talking about this morning, about the sons of Zadok, and that was just, and, and like Natasha, you gave that word about, in, in the house that we are, um, that there's going to be a word, there's going to be a sound emanating from that church. We're a very visible, high-profile building and facility in the city of San Francisco. And uh, there's going to be a sound coming out of that. And on the platform, you said the platform exposes people, and there was just, it, things were out of order in the platform. And uh, some people rose up in rebellion. They, they didn't like uh, Walters and I. They, you did not like the message of holiness. And so, um, and so well, out, out you go. And they, they left and they took, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they sent an email. I took like 40% um, of the church with them. Well, praise the Lord. You know, I said, God, just take them all. Just take them all. Just take them all. You know, just clean them out. And praise the Lord. And I used to call him, Jonathan, send an email, help. What do we do? <laughs> he calls Murray, and Murray calls his Lord. What do we do? You know, and then five days later, Renee, uh, thank you. You send your dad over here. David, um, Renee's dad, Renee Watkinson's dad, came over and helped us. He said, what do we do? Is we have church on Sunday. What do we do? So he came over and helped us uh, for a while. And, and, um, and Carrie, you came over and helped us. That was phenomenal when you came. Uh, Steve Hero was a fantastic. Just that time, just a real season. And the anointing you brought just was so healing and so helpful for us because it was real traumatic on the church, another big hit. And, um, and then after you left, then we found someone who played the guitar and a, a lady who was there, but and they served for a year, but then she moved out of the area. And so now um, Celebration Center, you are our worship team. And was seriously, no joke. What we do is, um, so Marcus, your worship team, and sometimes we have Isha and Hannah, depends who is there. What we do is we take the YouTube and we download it. And then I tell Max, he's our media guy, he says, okay, from marker number uh, 937 to 3243, take that and they cut that. And so what we do, so we have virtual worship, but God is using that. I tell you, there's an anointing on that. Marcus, every Sunday morning, you can ask Walter, every Sunday morning, it's the June 7th, 2022 service. It was a Tuesday night service. And you open it up and I get in there. Walter and I, we get in there at eight o'clock um, Sunday morning. The service is at 1030. Walter, he's cleaning the bathrooms. I clean out the auditorium. Okay, because, because we have uh, some renters and there's just some things and I'm cleaning out the atmosphere. And I put that, and I slide those faders full blast. That thing is full blast. And you open up that service, Marcus. Hey, let's give a shout out to the Lord. I just want to open it up. We declare in the atmosphere. And seriously, no joke, I can feel, I feel all the stuff in the spirits and stuff that are hanging around there from the other people that were there. They, I, seriously, I feel it. And it's just loud. And I'm walking around the sanctuary and the auditorium just, just taking authority over the whole thing. And sometimes I'm like, by the time it's 10.30, I'm like, I'm tired. You know? It's like, 
Okay, no, you know, but we do that every Sunday morning, and we do that in, um, as we worship, and there's an anointing on that, because I know here on the platform, there's an anointing that the, the team you carry, you have, you have clean hands, you have clean spirits, and the anointing that's on there, and God is using that because um, to tear down idols, because before we've had the worship team, it's the band, you know, and they were so great, and, and they're cute, and they're darling, and they're super talented, but their life was not. Every one of them has something, something out of order in their life. And this, and so here's this, and I said, I'm trying to teach people, you're the worshiper. These are the instruments, your hands, your feet, your mouth. You bring the worship, whether you got 50 people in the band, in video worship, acapella, whatever it is, you bring the worship. And to prepare the sons of Zadok, I'm teaching the sons of Zadok. And, and uh, I just want a sound of worship and praise that's going out. And so we're very grateful to you, and, and uh, Celebration Church is fantastic. Um, I'm going to give a, just an update on San Francisco. You've probably heard it in the news. Um, good news, the Cheesecake Factory is still there. <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> yay. So when you come, you can still go there. But, um, but, um, but actually, with everything with all the lockdowns and things, it's, it is not the same city that it used to be. Uh, lockdown, we, the city was locked down for like 11 months, the businesses and things. And um, what really took a big hit was all the, the BLM riots. Um, like down at Market Street, Main Street, just plywood everything, just smash the windows, downtown, the cable car, it was just empty, just empty. I went down there, um, and the cable car turned around, nobody there, there's nobody there but just the homeless people and the drug addicts. And the first time in my life I was afraid of San Francisco, because normally there's just like hundreds of people downtown, nobody there. When you get there, you see um, what's currently happening. Um, now there's... Um, a lot of looting and the crime, that's very real. Uh, we have like the stores, it's called Walgreens. It's a chain store similar to like your pharmacy or like the Target store. And what they do in um, San Francisco, because they don't want to, um, oh, what do they call it? We don't want to be discriminatory to people so they can steal up to, a, because you're persecuting the same people so that you can steal up to $1,000 worth of merchandise without being persecuted. So people, they go in there, they wear masks. There are people still wearing masks and stuff. Not for Germans, but they wear masks. They just walk in. And um, they just, and I've been in the store four times when that's happened, I just stopped going. And they just go in there, take a bag, just scooping, scooping everything. Just, just scoop it up and they just walk out. And it used to be like the little uh, lady at the clerk, at the store counter, she'd go like, hey, 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 hey. You know, and they, they don't even bother doing that. They can, sometimes they have like a mall cop guy standing there, but he just, but he doesn't have a gun. Um, it, like the, the police department, if they have him there, he kind of prevents things. But if it's just like a mall cop guy, he just stands there, just watch, watches him go. And, and it's quite a frightening thing because sometimes I don't, I, when I see it happening, I just, I go to the, I either leave or go to the other side of the store because I don't know if they're going to shoot me or kill me or what's going to happen. You just feel the spirit that's there. And as a result, many of these businesses have shut down. They've gone out of business. Walgreens, a pharmacy, closed, 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 closed. Downtown, they're closed. Um, there's a lot of businesses that are closing down. Just the last couple of weeks, I've been hearing restaurants. You know, a lot of things happened, you know, right after COVID. Okay, they, they closed and went out of business. Things like Fisherman's Wharf, Aliotos, over 100 years, closed, out of business. Uh, restaurants, family businesses, 45, 65, 70 years, closed, out of business. One, because they can't get workers there. Two, um, no customers. A mass exodus out of uh, California, out of San Francisco, um, because you know, with with the lockdowns and things with that they did, uh, people they could work remotely, and so they left. And a lot of people, uh, they they especially our young families, you know, they moved to the promised land of Texas and Arizona and Florida and South Carolina, the main places, because you could work remotely. I can get a, I I get this big salary from my um, dot com job, but I'm living in Texas. You know, I'm making $150,000 a year, but I'm living in Texas, so I can buy a big old house versus a little one-bedroom condo over here. And so a lot of people have moved, and you go downtown, and it's, and, it's, and it's, people call it like a ghost town. It's a little better now, but, you know, I can stand in the middle of the street, you know, still like now, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, nobody there. I could just stand there, you know. I used to take pictures down there, but it's kind of boring now, and uh, very few people there, but um, the plywood has gone off the windows, but they've kind of changed it to put like some vinyl covering on the windows to make it a little more nicer looking, um, but it's just empty, 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 empty. Just businesses are, are empty, um, so the economy is not good. I, you know, our wonderful governor has raised our, our taxes, have, have gone way up. We just, uh, April 15th is tax day in America. 
Um, this year, our, our state tax quadrupled. My, uh, my husband, he made a little more money than last year, but it didn't four times. I'm like, four times. And, and we have someone in our church who's very tempted to move to Texas because of the tax benefits. Um, a lot of people are leaving the state because, because of that. That's what's um, happening. Um, even with the San Francisco churches, uh, there have been a lot of churches. I don't know if a lot, but um, several of them have, have closed and just shut down. I know of like three smaller churches that were like under, you know, 70, 80 people, just gone. They just gone. Like a couple of them, I know the pastor just, I don't need this. They quit and left and they went back to wherever they came from. One, um, there's one church I know they had, they had a, biz, a building, a very nice building, and they sold it because um, they didn't have people to um, sustain it. There's another church that had over 200 people, a little over 200 people. They had, it was a young church that started there like three years ago. Um, big church from Texas came and sponsored them and they had a big church doing quite well. Uh, they were renting a school. But when the lockdowns and everything, they lost like 70% of their volunteers or dream teams. So they just quit. They just stopped. And like the people, um, one of the guys they were going to try to do a merge. Several churches are merging. I know there's a couple of little churches, you know, close to us. They're small people, you know, 15, 20 people, and they're merging. So that's kind of what's happening with the churches. They're, um, they've been closed down, several, and um, uh, merging. Um, but we're still there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, um, and one thing I've seen about the, the church there in San Francisco, there's an assignment on that church. There's an assignment on that house. And I've see, I saw it years ago. Mary, I remember this was like 20, 27, 28 years ago. I was in the back of the auditorium, back in the sound booth there, and you were, and you were standing there. San Francisco, you need to come in. You pull the demonic, you just pull it off, and you're standing, doing this. I remember it. I could see it so clear. And lift up your heads, O you gates, that the king of glory may come in. And I'm standing back there. I'm going, yes, yes. And I could, I could feel it then. There's an assignment on the house. Because let me tell you about this piece of property. Um, in San Francisco, it's so for a church to have a big building, it used to be a supermarket. So we made it into a church, a big auditorium, and we have a parking lot. And it's very rare in San Francisco to have a place to park. It is on Ocean Avenue. It's the southern part of the city, highly visible, a major intersection. Right across the way is a, a train station, the BART train station, and the streetcars over there. And we're surrounded by schools. We have um, Balboa High School. We've got one, two, Balboa High School, a middle school, another high school right across the street, a little, little kid's elementary school, and another high school a block that way, and two blocks up there is, is City College High School, or City College, City College. Okay, so literally surrounded by thousands of young people. And you know, the world will tell that wants to give the agenda to the church that we say like, okay, yeah, just, okay, just go over here and, and help the, the homeless and the drug addict, and, and we need to help these people with missions of compassion. But they want the, the gospel, okay, you, you just go over there, stay there, but we want the students. But something that we've always wanted is the students speaking to the young people and speaking to their life about their future. And in our building, because it's so visible, and, and with the paint job that you guys did for us, we stand out. It's, 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 you know, I wanted to name the church as Plain Celebration Center, but at the time of the transition and stuff, we, the, the Daring Faith is in there, so it's Daring Faith Celebration Center. But, but people, people know that we, we're there. Um, it's, it's highly coveted. We have, um, in the city, uh, they want property. And they want to make af affordable housing, which is kind of a fake name. There's no such thing as affordable housing. Um, you know, they, one thing in the city is like they have the contractors. If you, if you build something, 10% of the units have to be below market rates. So if they build 100 units, um, or yeah, 1,000, let's say I want to build 1,000 units like downtown the massive skyscrapers. Well, 100, 100 of them. 10% have to be below market rate. Well, they're not going to do that downtown in the luxury area. So what they do, they're bringing it out here in our area around the church. So all these are this. Well, I build 100 here. And back in 2016, some guy comes up to me with the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle, and, and he says, did you see this? And I'm looking at this. It says, future home of low-income housing. And there's a picture of our church building on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle. I'm like, whoa. And so I called up our attorney, and, I, and he goes, looks like eminent domain to me. And what eminent domain is, is like a real estate transaction. If the, the government decides, okay, we want to build a, a hospital here, well, we're going to build it here. 
You know, not we, you know, because and if your house is here, your business is here, too bad because this hospital, the school is more important than what you're doing, and so we want to take an eminent domain over that. That's what they that's the position that the government can do that. And um and I had I had gotten a call from someone, I thought it I thought it was a crank call, but it was actually the mayor at that time and you know, <laughs> and, you know, and I'm like, yeah. And he says, he says, come out of the mayor's office and and um, why don't you give your property to the city? I'm like, who is this? You know, and and um, turns out it was the mayor, and they took us down there, and they wanted us to to give the property and dream, and well, you can be on the bottom. And I'm like, no, no. And so what we did, we did a, we fought the city, we had a petition and all that stuff, and um, made them very unhappy. And we had a petition, and the the guy from the city hall rang me up. He goes, take it down, take it down. I'm like, no. I says, give me a letter. Give me something in writing. No, nope, take it down. I says, not till I get something in writing that you're not going to touch our property. And then finally, then like an hour later, he sends me an email. And I sent, sent it to our attorney. And he says, yeah, OK, that, that suffices. You know? and, and then I said, I wouldn't take it down until, because um, we had the um, petition out there like, hey, we're building plenty of affordable housing. And there are tons of it around. Um, around in our neighborhood. And I said, just leave us alone. And so they left us alone. For then, but last month Walter got a call on his cell phone from a city. I rep city. I represent the city of San Francisco. We want would like to buy your property. I'm like, no, okay. So Walter told him no. He was very nice. But um, one other thing. Um, but there's an assignment on that house bigger than all these things, and God has sustained what He's doing. And something that I've seen an increase in in the past year and a half is an increase of witchcraft and demonic activities. Now, I don't know if you see, I haven't seen too many billboards or advertising here, but in San Francisco, you see all the movie stuff and the demonic stuff and the evil things on the billboards on the side of the bus. And, and you're, wa you're watching TV, I was eating lunch and, and watching Home and Garden Channel, and here's a commercial, all these things come on. What, I don't even know the name of the movie, but she was like manifesting, and how do you do that? It just So it's like in your face all the time. Okay, you guys have the same thing. Um, but I noticed something. This was in, um, we were getting real momentum in 20. The September, October, November, December 2021. We had some real momentum, some people were coming, and it was just great and fantastic. And I remember the last week of December, Murray, we talked to you, and you said that you, you're, you're starting to prepare the most important message of your life. You're going to start to talk about the kingdom. And I said, yeah, this is great. You know, like, praise God. And so we're start bringing in the revelation of the kingdom and stuff. And then I noticed on outside, there's pairs of men's high-top tennis shoes that were placed around the building. Now, it, didn't, it took me a while to figure this out. So over the next 90 or 100 days, I'd see, it's like, who put these shoes there? Like, um, like on the corner of, of the entrance to the driveway there, this man's height, they're not just thrown there. They're placed side by side, specifically placed there. Well, throwing stuff in our parking lot. And then, and then a couple of weeks later, well, what's, who's doing that? The shoes over there, you know, like that. And then one time there's one right in, in the front door and the entry door. Now, even before, let me backtrack here, like, a year ago. Now, back behind our building, Ocean Avenue is big, big here. Across the street is an old trophy company. There's some people who really into some demonic things. But back here, there's a house there. It's a big old house, five-bedroom house, and that's where the priests from the, the Buddhist temple live. And um, you see them walking through there. And uh, so the, the Buddhists, they wanted to uh, rent our building and property, and, our, and I said no. And, um, but I used to see this, these people, and we used to have these little cameras, the, the ring cameras, the blink cameras, the little battery-operated ones, and we'd see people like, like in a front door, and they'd be walking like with their phone, and they'd be walking, and then they'd take something out of their pocket, like sprinkle, because um, right in front of our door, because I know the things with, with witchcraft and some of these things, um, like points of contact, like when you, the, the dust, the blood, the, the hair, the whatever, the, 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 whatever they do. And I used to see that, and, um, and uh, um, I would see that, and people thought like, oh, you know, and people did not believe me. I'm telling you, I said, I'm telling you this stuff is demonic. And people would tell me, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And, um, and, th and then Walter, I think that when you saw that one guy, like, you thought, okay, these, these crazy women. But I saw there's a young man, like in his early 30s, has some nice dress slacks on and a nice coat, and he's doing that. I'm like, but these people from the back, you know, and um, and a guy like that's going out there. Now, fast forward 23. Here's all these um, shoes, and like and we come out after we have our dream team meeting, and we come out, and somebody says, "Hey, how come there's some shoes over there in the par parking lot?" I'm like, they came out, and they're facing the building, and and, um, and then um, right after we started talking about the kingdom, the next 90 to 100 days, we st everybody, everybody from little kids to the grandmas. 
issues with the feet and the legs. Walter was doing something and he wasn't turned around and he hit the wall, broke two toes. Oh, a couple weeks later, I was walking and I was in, in the bedroom and I turned around and I was in a hurry and I hit, I chipped the bone on the side of my ankle. Um, people would fall. They hurt their knee. There's a, a woman who is a strong intercessor of the church. She fell. She broke her leg. She was been housebound for a year. People were falling. Little kids. This, this kid comes in, a teenager, like, and comes in on crutches. Like, what happened to you? Like, oh, I rolled my ankle in, in soccer practice, you know, and like, and here's this lady, oh, I didn't, couldn't come today because my kid, you know, my little kitty's all of a sudden got an infected and grown toenail. I don't know, just bizarre things, you know. And it's, but it's just all of a sudden it happened, this really weird, and I felt like in the spirit, and Jonathan, you confirmed that, like that um, scripture says in Ephesians, how lovely are the, um, yeah, 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 prepare your feet with the readiness of the gospel. Of, your feet represent the gospel. And it, and it was, and I thought, man, and so we were praying, binding against that, and then, um, then we see more stuff. There was um, uh, one week, it was quite intense. They had um, these things. There was, uh, I didn't see a Walter saw it. And it was a Sunday morning. And it looked like there was blood on the outside wall. And he said it was probably like, uh, what do you guys call it? T not ketchup, tomato sauce. Okay. But I don't think it was tomatoes. There's probably blood mixed in with it because like the Santeria people, they do the animal sacrifices, whatever. But it's not just a little bit. It was smeared like maybe, you know, a meter square on the side of the wall. Um, about three weeks later, there was a whole bunch poured in the back end of the property. Um, that week there, there was um, just even the neighbors, the unsaved neighbors, somebody drove in one, one o'clock in the afternoon, smashed our you know, cinder block wall, smashed the gate. It's a miracle the guy didn't die, but our, our gate was messed up for like four and a half months. Um, there's a nightclub across the street, somebody got shot and killed. Uh, it just, just bizarre things were happening. And so we were just really taking authority over these things. So um, just like what you're talking about, I appreciate, um, Wes, what you shared about being aware of the demonic and deliverance of that. And because a lot of people, are, I've noticed like in San Francisco, like in our church, I said, we, we have to take authority over these things. Some people think like, oh, you're imagining it or you're um, exaggerating it. But I, I just see these things happening. But like TK said, you know, hey, you know, we're more concerned about um, the gospel. Our God is greater than all these things. But in the midst of all these things, I'm excited. But, but we're still here. And God's, God's been good to us. And amen, we're still on assignment. And my husband's going to share just briefly. Amen. Walter, would you come share? Amen. God bless you, church. It's really, really, really good to be here. Uh, I just, I know my wife already thanked Mary and Nancy, but we are really grateful, everything. And um, Jonathan, Natasha, thank you so much. I always, they're always looking up uh, for us whenever we go through difficult times. You know, you know we call Mary, and Mary says, hey, you know, uh, calls Jonathan, and then Jonathan calls us just to make sure everything's right. And I just... I appreciate this church very, very much. You know, you guys are incredible. You know, the hospitality, amazing. Your worship, amazing. You guys are amazing. You really are. You know, and I have, I've seen uh, so much faithfulness in this church. Uh, we've been coming here for quite a few years, and I see a lot of faithful uh, faces here that stayed uh, for so many years here, regardless of, of the circumstances, you know, and uh, I really appreciate that. It really ministers to me. Uh, I always get sensitive when the spirit of the living God, it's, it's present, you know, so, uh, but I just, uh, I appreciate Murray very much. You know, one of the things I want to, uh, I, I know I'm not here to talk about Murray, but, but I just, I just want to thank him so much because, you, you know, he, he really preaches the word of God. He really gets to the root of what needs to be taken care of inside the soul, you know. And he knows the consequences that are going to take place as a result of that. Some, some people may not like it, but we really need to hear the truth, you know, because sometimes the truth really hurts. And I really admire Murray and Nancy. I really do. I, I, see, him, I, I see him as a, a, a UFC spiritual fighters. That's how I see him, you know, because they really are warriors. They're in the spiritual realm. That's what they are, you know. And uh, also, Kelly, Kelly and, and Melanie, uh, I appreciate you guys too also as well, you know. And thank you for welcoming us. And uh, I just wanted to say that. But uh, I also want to talk just a little bit. I won't take too much time. But I want to talk about the goodness of God, the favor of God. I have seen the favor of God for so many years, 
in our church year after year after year. You know, the, the Word of God says, you know, I, I know it's uh, our, uh, Angel Gabriel, when he's speaking to Mary, he calls her highly favored. But you know, you and I are also highly favored. God chose us even before we were born. That's highly favored. So you're, everything, uh, think about it from this perspective. Whatever you go through, remember this, that you are highly favored. No matter what you go through, whatever's going to come across your path, remember that you are highly favored. Remember, as Mary was, was, was uh, the angel was speaking to Mary, you know, you would think there would be blessings right after that, that word, but there were no blessings. There were trials that Mary went through. And, and don't, don't ever think that God has abandoned you because God has not, has not abandoned you. You're still highly favored. And there's a reason and a purpose that why we go through what we go through in our personal lives. You know, it's for the glory of God. Mary went through what he, she had, and she realized what she was stepping into because she had the favor of the living God. I have seen it in my church, in our church. I've seen it even through these difficult times that we went through during COVID. People left our church. You know, we had to close the church. There was, there was no income really coming in, but God still provided you know, one of the things that I think is very important for every child of God to do is always to be thankful and to realize who we are in Christ. You know, I, one of the things that I, that I did, you know, during that difficult time that we went through, I said, God, I thank you that you are our provider. God, I thank you, Father God, that the favor of you is upon my life. I thank you that the favor of you is upon the church, upon the building, upon my, my health. This is the way we ought to see ourselves. You are highly favored. You know, for those who might be looking for a job or anything, you, you say to yourself, I am highly favored and I'm going to get that job. I'm going to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I am highly favored. You know, and I believe that, you know, all we have to do is just speak it out and God will hear our prayers and those prayers will come. He will answer those prayers if we're walking right in harmony with the Lord. But just remember that, that you are highly favored. I saw during, during this last two or three years, it's amazing the, the amount of provision that God has given our church. You know, the government, I'm going to share some of the things that the, 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 how, how the Lord has, has blessed us. You know, we received $50,000 from the government. That is a result of God's favor. We were able to get a grant. I believe it was 60, love, 60? $190,000, but there was another grant that we also got, $190,000, a grant to, to get cameras around the building, to be able to get some lighting around the building, and to get some protected, protected film around our windows. We were, we're, just recently, we got another grant uh, for new entry doors. So this is how awesome God is. God is. You know, so you know why God provided for us? Because during these difficult times that we went through, we always kept our eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We never gave up on him. We never gave up on him. God is a, is a good provider, and we trusted in him even, even through difficult times. You know, he is an awesome God, and he deserves all the glory and all the honor and all the praises. He really does deserve it, you know. So if you're going through a downtime in your life, just remember this, your godly favor. Also, you know, I, I really believe this, not, not to be on the downside, but I really believe that, 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 that the church, you know, in the, in the years to come, we're going to go through some serious persecution. And we have to be ready for that. You know, uh, 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 it's just, I, I'm, seeing a, I'm seeing it almost in a spiritual realm coming down the pipe. We have to be ready. And remember that no matter, just like Mary, she was highly favored. She went through difficult times, but she kept her eyes upon the Lord. So as persecution comes across your way, stay strong in Christ, and God will see you through. Amen. God bless you, Mary, Nancy. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And the speakers, unbelievable. I really got really ministered to. Thank you for the great word you gave me. You know, it's just, again, you guys are awesome. And uh, this, this is for Kelly. Uh, Gloria al Señor Todo Poderoso. Glory to God, all powerful. Very, Kelly wanted me to say something in Spanish. God bless you. Awesome.
Uh, Walter originally comes from El Salvador, and um, I just love his passion. Yeah, you just feel, you can just feel it. And, um, you know, and that uh, other thing, Walter, too, is uh, God has given you great passion and great emotion. And, um, and that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes through that, that emotion, because uh, it moves. The Holy Ghost moves people through that emotion. And, um, and Barb, you know, Barb, I, I don't know. I mean, she's a small girl. She's tiny, but she's so tough. <laughs> and um, I'm really glad you shared about some of the battles because we, we need to lift up our prayer and our prayer support. And also, anybody going to America, you've got to go to San Francisco and be in the church. Go and help. Go and pray. Go and get rid of those sand shoes and um, <laughs> get the blood off the walls. <laughs> But, um, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, what's that guy, Anton, you know, the, the Satanist Anton LaVey and that. And, and San Francisco has been a, a, a headquarters of Satanism, really, in America and that. And it's been a very, very difficult place to build a church. And it's really interesting because you might think, oh, the folk, there's quite a big focus on the building. Um, but what you've got what what to understand is God has put an embassy a physical embassy in the middle of that town. The city hates it. The devil hates it. The community hates it. There's this anger and resentment and bitterness because God has put a stake down. And if you had a scene, you can't even imagine the level of warfare that's come to possess that building, to possess that stake in the ground that God has, has actually put down in there. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really amazing. But look, we honour you guys. We love you. We honour you guys. We honour the work. Uh, we honour your tenacity. You know, you stand, you stand, and you stand, and you stand, and you stand. And, uh, and then you see the miracles. God comes with the miracles. Yeah. So Father God, we, we just thank you so much for Walter and Barb. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives, what you've done in their lives. We thank you for their gratefulness and their thankfulness. And Lord, we just, each one in this room right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just release an anointing on them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I ask, Lord, for the impartation of your Holy Ghost to flood in over their minds, over their emotions, over their physical bodies. I ask, Lord, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to flood down into the veins, into the marrow of their bones. I ask, Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will arise out of their mouths, out of their eyes. I ask, Lord, that their ears will be open to hear from the Spirit and their mouth will declare the very works of God. Father, we speak harvest, we speak souls, we speak breakthrough, we speak worship, we speak the Word, we speak life, we speak liberty, and we say to you, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we break your hold, we stand in opposition to you, we resist everything you're doing, in that city, in that nation, we stand against you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we ask that you'd send your angelic hosts. We ask, Lord, that you would change the government over that church, over that city, over that place. We ask, Lord, that you would change the spiritual government. You would change the natural government. You would bring it down. You would bring them to their knees. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ today. And we thank you for that, Lord, in your mighty name. Father, we bless our brother TK and our nation. Uh, we welcome him in the spirit and his wife and his family and his children. We ask, Lord, that you will release his voice into the nation, into the nation that you may be glorified. And we receive him and receive your words through him in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, I got the yeah. <laughs> it's an anointing ah, against the demonic. Yeah. Shikiri. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm just serving a few things, notice. <laughs> I'm looking at you, but I'm actually, in, I'm up here. I'm up here and we're just serving notice on some demonic entities and spirits and witchcraft that would try to come in. And, uh, you know, God has given us authority to open the heavens. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to open the heavens over our city and over the nation and the nations. And uh, we can do this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so, Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We bless you and love you. Hey, Brother Don's ministering tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to that already. So look, go home, have a rest, be blessed, be encouraged. We'll see you tonight, and we're going to really push into the presence of God. Amen.